Hello, and welcome to the last episode of Loving Belize. My name is Rose Robin, and I've been biking around Belize for the past eight months, interviewing people from all walks of life, and teaching children in schools how to do free expression. And I just want to say thank you to all the people that I've interviewed who've helped me along my travels, who's introduced me to traditions and cultures. Thank you so much, Belize. Thank you to the Garifuna, the Creole, the East Asians, the Chinese, the Mennonites, the expatriates, and the Maya. Thank you so much. I just want to say it's been an amazing experience. And I hope that everybody who has watched Loving Belize has enjoyed this experience too. My name is Jaime Awe. I'm the director of the Belize Institute of Archaeology. You know, for so many years, Belize was considered peripheral to the great Maya civilization. The research that we've now done here indicates that Belize was actually in the heart of the Maya world. National Geographic, in January, ranked the 10 sacred cave sites in the world to visit. Belize had two caves ranked, number one and number nine you want to learn about the Maya, from the earliest Maya to the coming of the Spanish, contact period Maya, come to Belize. I was born in Belize. I was born in San Ignacio. When I first began in archaeology, I used to be a one-man department. Today we have about 20 people who work for the department, or the institute as we now call it. We're cutting stalactites and you can date, they have little rings, you can date it, but it also tells you about climate change. So we're getting now this pattern of climate uh, reconstruction for 10,000 years. At least some of us strongly believe that drought conditions began to seriously affect the Maya area. But they were already running into problems. Too many people, they are cutting down the, the, the forest, so there is some environmental degradation, and then they get hit by drought. authentic Maya music for a thousand years. <laughs> Marie and others have discovered several fossil beds at about 70 feet below or 20 meters below. How old is that uh, vertebrae and from what, what um, dinosaur do you think it's from? It works. It's actually from a giant sloth. So a giant like sloth? A what the hell are the ants? Right. I'm trying to figure it out. One of my graduate students, Kevin, was actually off in a corner as quiet as it was, but he was feeling something. It's like, Kevin, what have you got? Turned out to be the canoe path. People hold it much longer because it's uh, fragile and deteriorating. So it is made of sapodilla wood, which is a heavy wood that sinks. Because this was Benkebie, an old bank. And then after we had got our patron saint, they added El Carmen. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's a, a good devotion to our lady, our lady. Mm -hmm. you know. That, that's the happiest time in, in, in every year when this time comes. Our Blessed Mother takes somebody some, some time too. Yeah. So I, I wonder who our Blessed Mother will take this time. <laughs> <laughs>
open. <laughs> so what do you know about the Mennonites? They speak low German, a 19th century Protestant group, form their own communities. So how long have they been drilling for oil here? 2006. A guy was drilling a water well and hit oil. Would you say that um, drilling oil is detrimental to the environment? We're an intelligent species that uses technology. Uh, otherwise, we'd be naked apes. We use our oil, we use our chemicals, we use our brains. Everything will degrade and go back to the earth. I don't believe in global warming. It's part of the natural ice age cycle. One volcano going off puts out more pollution than man can create. We're going to a point where there won't be polar ice or glaciers. Back in the time of the dinosaurs, there were dinosaurs living in Alaska and Antarctica. And what do you think of um, off, off coast drilling? country has to decide whether it wants tourism or oil. Do you want to go scuba diving with an oil rig next to you? What's the potential for our things going wrong? We're dumb humans. We want to do it as quickly and as cheaply as possible to get out the maximum amount of money. Who does that benefit? We're going to create more billionaires, give 50 people jobs, and ruin a coral reef, and cause tens of thousands of people to lose their tourism jobs. Technology will only improve. The oil's not going anywhere. The world doesn't need the oil. Politicians and rich people will go, well, the economic benefit, but yeah, I am Lenny. Lenny, and you're doing some lithography on t-shirts. Which we try to teach the young boys and them how to do the, the thing, you know. So, did you organize this whole event? Yeah. How long is staying for? Uh, for um, around 12 days. I brought all the shirts. The whole country. For the kids. Uh, yeah. To set up basketball. Yeah. Basketball yeah. summer camp. Yeah. Um, it's the Belize Boys Club. Yeah. The foreign famous culture club. Alright, yeah. Oh, um, so this is the kind of thing you do? You organize? Organize events to teach them how to get along. You're all from Kikoka? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Are you, are you enjoying the summer camp? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, you want to support us? To totally. I'm, I've, you know, I've, know, I've known Larry a while. <laughs> he, he learns quickly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you try so hard and you do just like, you know, that it's in the net and you can't put it in. This was in 1942 when the first hurricane, the 8th of November. After that hurricane, the government wasn't, didn't care anything for the island. It was on the key track, you know. They postponed to build, to the government to help them to build a, a hurricane shelter. After Janet, we proposed it again. To, to build, build a, a shelter? Build we need it for the poor people that yes, live for in the poor class, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Melvin Albert Badillo. Thank you very Maybe much. Maybe when I make the comment, they could put my name. Yes, I will. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes.
So this is your piece of land here? Uh, no, not for me. For my brother, but he died already. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so I'm just building, I'm just using the land because well, he got a daughter already, so oh, yeah? it will be for his daughter. Oh. Like the best tree climbers ever. Excuse me, what's your, what's your name? Tina. Tina, and this, well, this is your restaurant. What's your restaurant called? Tina's Kitchen. Tina's Kitchen. What, what kind of food do you? Cultural dishes, local food. So what's it? What's it like uh, in living in Hopkins? Well, it's nice. People are very friendly. What is Ricardo? Oh, no, it's a spice. Uh -huh. That we Asian or Caribbean country use a lot in Hopkins. Right, and wh where does it come from? <laughs> what's what's going on? Why 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 is there a whole lot of beer in your farm? Oh, we're getting ready for bath for the rainforest. Oh, it's wrap for the brain first! Oh, we're getting ready! Oh. Well, um, actually we're having a rap competition at Poetry Slam to promote the Rainforest Academy! Oh! It's going to be over here! The trees are big, the trees are strong, they hold the birds that sing the song, reminding us that day has once again triumphed overnight, as the entire world is showered with a splendid light. Well, this is the sad where princes become paupers, children have no fathers and women, Women are seen as tricks before mothers. This is the side where it shoot now and don't ask. Police come just run fast cause on this side you're guilty until proven innocent yet still we get no justice. Once again it's just us at the back seat of this proverbial bus getting bus silly by a syllabus that was not made for us. Where is the right to say baby? It's down on the 960 acres guys. You don't know that that the place where me plants up the cassava. The plants of me arm oh, In the jungle where the lion and the people Them live so nice and peaceful Nowadays you wonder why them have it so simple Talk about them no want the profession This is why the whole of them are walking with insufficient Me say me love the rainforest and me love the trees Me have to confess me love the natural breeze The feeling I ease me to spread like disease When me under the trees a rainforest believes You ain't even know it, you just got to with them fly birds You ain't even know it, got them jaguars, staffers and two cats You ain't even know it, red eye tree by looking at you And you ain't even know it oh my I will not stop in the market, okay? <laughs> What's your name? Anthony Anthony, mm -hmm. so you play in the in the market in San I have been here? playing in this market for over 15 years. Every Saturday you can meet me here. Every that's, that's lovely. I love markets. They're such lively places. Mm -hmm. I was about to tell you that <laughs> this is the best place for me to hone my skills. Best school of human psychology, right in. It's the Maximus again. Them. Tell a friend to tell a friend me call me and then Yes, I'll be right there Chetra, back in the river See him there? No, you get him Get eaten, Basha ah!
<laughs> it's a scary story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Yes? Well, Riona is a Belizean tale and she is a horrible woman who's quite crazy and she killed her children, right? And then she drowned them in the river and then instantaneously she died. She died of grief and now she's a ghost and she roams the rivers at night. <laughs> He, he chops off your thumb. So it's a little dwarf that runs around the forests in Belize with backwards feet. Once upon a time, there was Katari Hemne and his friend. He was at the, 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 the woods and Katari Hemne saw him and took out his thumb. Then he went to the river swim and he, got, he think he's got away then Tata and they follow him home and chop off his head dun 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 <laughs> and I'm saying one more song to tell everybody and I'm to ride the tiger the one on the boat and then everybody tell the tiger and the tiger went on the boat and then after that and then she get and then she and then she went, went home and Feel like she was sick, and then the, she took the tiger and the tiger threw her on the boat. And she, and then she was um, smiling. Smiling because he's a clever spider. <laughs> twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Like a diamond in the sky. Like, who are this? <laughs> one time Rachel gone to buy a pot bread for her three children. She cut it at three little peas for give she children. And then she said, hi, see their children, nicely. Then I grab their plate and I give them a sausage. <laughs> not, not. Who's there? Orange. Orange you? Aren't you going to let me in? <laughs> Nana. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Why are you crying? <laughs> My name is Narciso, Marciso, Narciso Torres. I am the president of the, the El Pilar Forest Garden Network and uh, also the the president of the Canon Cash um, organized group. You know, I, I I'm trying to to promote this uh, this this culture of mine that uh, is a indigenous culture, Maya culture, gardening and, and, and a sustainable way of living, or, and um, also promoting reforestation. It contains sugar inside. Take a specific how it up if you wanted to sample one. And the leaves are are, are boiled for um, for making a tea for when people have um, very bad cough sugar. Mm -hmm. Very sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the custard apple. Uh -huh. Liquid that the bark have tend to make the swelling uh, go very fast down. This is a life everlasting plant, making swells swelling areas go faster. Good for asthma. If you have them, you could have eat them plain with a little. Pinch of salt. Calabash. In Calabash. English. Calabash in English. For us, a drinking vegetable. People take, uh, use it for curing asthma too. Um, they will boil a uh, meat that's inside uh, with brown sugar, and that will, they will create like a like a jam like. This is a refreshing plant. Uh -huh. So you could have a. You could uh, wet your head or have a bath with it entirely. Maybe a, an ounce. Less than an ounce of water, just to get it wet. You can use this for your face too, for for the pimples, or like this, you know. Before. Would you put put this on your face? Yes, yes, just yeah. rub it through it. What we do for with when people have the the pink eye, put it over eye like like this. 
Talk about this uh, bread nut. Plant. So these, these are the bread nut seeds. Yes, these are the bread nut seeds. Yes. And so what, what do you do? We, we boil them uh -huh. with a little salt and you can have them like that or, or mash them with a little water to make it like a mashed potato. Mm -hmm. No bay leaf tree, we call it Koshan in Maya and um, the heart of it is anti-cancerous and this is the leaf that the, the Maya used to making their traditional houses or indigenous plants or, or meals you can see it's, it's, it's very different the beaver grass. When they have beaver, mm -hmm. they will drink this uh, like, a, like a juice like This plant is called um, Sorosi the young shoots you could add it to salad. The leaves are are are, are, are boiled and, and taken for for um, tonifying the blood. The fruit, both of them. This is open. This is not open. But this uh, this this part is, is um, could be steamed. Sometimes when they have a, a rough rushes, they will drink the leaves and, and and take a bath of the leaves also. This bed is a um, is a special plant for. Um, uh, purging the system, a handful of leaves and make a, um, a liter of water and boil it and drink that for a, for a day at least. You know? and it's pakaya, pakaya or, or chip in Maya. Um, it produces a, a pot that uh, will grow, grow to maybe an inch in diameter. These are young fruits that are starting here, you can see. And it's believed that it's a anti cancerous uh, food, you know. Copot leaf. Uh, and it's called Obel in Maya, but it's an uh, anti-parasite. Tastes like aniseed. Mm. Well, try is this one here. It is um, it, it's an edible leaf, yeah. but um, it, you need to be very careful uh, of, of picking them. Yeah, little spikes. Yeah, don't, 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 don't touch, touch them. them. <laughs> don't touch them, please. <laughs> but they're like a cactus that would stick into me? They will start to bite and eat. Green, green stick, we call it. It's the green stick? Ah, uh, green stick. I, I'll try this. Or, or rheumatism, tough ones like this to ha to make a bath. So this is this is the poison wood you can see. Yeah, but the because of the black sap. Ch uh, chickens are getting sick from uh, some kind of um, uh, I think wart. They come on their faces or uh -huh. their head, you know. Um, people will take uh, uh, some sap of this and, and put five, I think about five drips to a gallon of water for the chicken to drink uh -huh. in their water so it will make the, the warts fall fall up. Uh -huh. We call it dog, dog stone for the for the seed that resembles resembles something like that, you know. Um, uh, we You're saying it resembles dog's walls? Yes, <laughs> yeah, dog's okay. walls. <laughs> this is edible, you know, you could eat one or or two of them. But if you eat more than more than more than um, three, it will induce vomiting. What the Maya used to do to put the sap with a cotton mm -hmm. and put it in the cavity, in a big cavity, and it will shatter the make the teeth broken. Small teeth is a special special plant, you know. <laughs> it's got lots of ants on it. <laughs> oh yes, the ants are the protector of the tree. Like the little hole in this uh, spike they, here. Yeah, they they build a hollow. They live inside there? Inside, in that, yeah. That little uh, hole there. Oh, I can see him. Yeah, he's coming out. Mm -hmm. The larva of these ants, and they will boil it with a garlic and give give the people or the sick people that are have the asthma, asthma problem. Oh. The root is the is anti poisonous to snake bites. Uh, some people call it Santa Maria, bitter leaf, especially for um, giving women after delivering their babies. So they will give them to drink and to to wash um, jackass bitters, jackass bitters. Getting rid of losses in, in people's head, you know, like in children's head. Good, good for curing also um, sores, not only um, fresh cold and fever, you know. It's a very special wine, we call it the allspice wine, fresh in tea, but also medicinal um, for people who have uh, diabetes. Uh -huh. So. Is this uh, tarantula um, poisonous? Yeah, but um, you bother it, you know? They kill the uh, uh, horse. 
It could kill a horse. Aquí es Belize, pero allá es Guatemala. El, el arroyo. Medio campo. Ah, el medio campo para allá. Para allá es Guatemala, el medio campo acá Belice. Ok. Eh, ¿Es Guatemala para allá? Ah, ¿el tienda es en Guatemala? Ah, ¿yo puedo ir? Sí, a la tienda. Sí, pero la no Sí, vámonos a la tienda, ¿no? No, ok, no, ok. ¿Qué? Soldados, los policías. Ah, sí. Sí, los, los policías son allá, ¿no? Ah, uh -huh. oh, sí. No, no. Vamos a la tienda en, en Belice. No, 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 no. Nosotros no cruzamos la línea imaginaria. ¿Tú me puedes hacer un gran favor? ¿Qué? ¿Me puedes comprar algo en la tienda y te quedas con el cambio? ¿Con el vuelto? Bueno. Buena onda, vos. ¿Qué le compro? Cómprate unas. Unas pepsis, te compras una para ti y te quedas con el vuelto, ¿está bien? It's part of our lives because I was 15 and now I am 24. I have been growing here in Caracol, learning, sharing with friends, knowing that I am a real Arenalenia, knowing my roots, my identity, and also, like you see the, this morning, sharing with other young girls, other young boys about um, gender, and all those things we learned here how to play because as you heard some of our girls here and in the world they don't know how to play because when we when we are growing we are we we have the time to only to take care of our our brothers and sisters but here we play i think that if caracol didn't exist for me it will be like i will be with i don't know how many kids with them with a, with my husband maybe but now I am alone, I am 24 and I, I am thinking with, for myself and for the all, for all the communities and, and for the children that are growing up. Williams. 
Right. How do you feel about that last fight? That, 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 that was an easy one for me, you know, as my record is 17 and 0. I haven't lost no fight. I was all 17 fights in my own account. Wow, so, like, in Belize, are you considered as a new up and coming boxer? No, I am. You are? Yeah. Yes. Well, how high in Belize are you considered? I'm, I'm, I'm the best in my weight class. Wow. And what weight class is that? It's well the way. I fight at 107 pounds. And at this month, I'm going to Nicaragua for the Central American Championship. I'm well, flying good out. Luck for that. Huh? Good luck for that. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll do fantastic. Sure. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> And uh, I understand you have a gym? Yeah, Lions Den from Ladyville, manager, trainer yeah, for the gym. So tell me a little bit about your, your gym and your boxes. Well, it's a small gym, but you know, it uh, consists of boxes from out the streets. You know, kids, you know, we try to develop the sports of boxing. So we just open a gym and we try to get young kids off the street, you know, and keep, and, uh, keep them out of prison. I interviewed uh, an old boxer, and I've, I've forgotten his name, maybe you'll know him. He is in Belize City, and he actually has an ice cream cart. Oh, well, that's uh, Bowers. Yeah. Bowers. Yeah. Now, he explained a little bit about what boxing used to be like yeah, in Belize. Yeah, boxing was really nice back in the 80s. That was Bowers' time, you know. He had a lot of old fighters beside him. You know, Ruben Smith, you know, uh, Charlie Clark, and uh, other guys, you know. Have that, like, I had to go on, but... You know, the sport just died after politics get in the game, you know, it's just how to go that they don't invest nothing in the sports or any sports at all. You have most gyms, they don't have the equipment, you know, or they don't get the support. And you think it's a, a great way to get the kids off the streets? Yeah, and keep them off the streets, yeah, and keep them motivated, you know, mind free, you know, frustration free. So that's what you need, you know, keep the violence off the streets, come out of the homes. That is not all in the streets, you get from the home too. That's where it started, so if they could start to get them, their kids into more sports and more events, I think Belize would be a much safer and better place. If there's anybody out there that would like to sponsor Lance and Littleville, call me at 604-948, you know, and I'll contact Clinton Tucker, that's me. And uh, we'll, we'll get along, we'll, do, we'll make a change, you know, that's what we're here for. So I'm about to leave from Cancun airport. I found it's cheaper to go from Belize uh, back and forth um, on the bus from Belize City to Cancun airport and then wherever you want to go. It's a bit more expensive from Belize uh, airport. So uh, I'm leaving. I sold my bicycle to uh, Narcisio Torres um, who now has a, has a bike and a trailer to take his uh, stuff from his farm to the market and make a bit of money himself. So. Uh, I'm pretty happy about where my bike's gone. So I'm off and I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much Belize. I've fallen in love with you and I very much want to go back. There's so many places I didn't see, but everywhere I saw was just beautiful, diverse and full of amazing, beautiful people. I'm leaving the tropics and going to Vancouver in the winter, which a lot of people and a lot of my mates have told me I'm absolutely foolish and crazy to do. But um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find things that are interesting to do there. And um, I'm sure I'm going to meet some wonderful people. So here we are. The adventure continues. Thank you so much for watching Love and Belize.